the absolute measure of skewness he has given the formula as q3 minus q2 minus q2 minus q1 n by 4 the item so this will be equal to 60 divided by 4 that is the 15th item if you see the skb skewness it will be q3 plus q1 minus 2m divided by q3 minus q1 so this is bowley skewness Hello everyone I am Purnima faculty in the department of commerce and management Vidyashram first grade college temple of excellence Mysore I welcome you all to the session 8 of unit 2 Now in this session we will be studying about the Bowley's measure of skewness So in the previous session I had discussed about Carl Pearson's measures of skewness Now in this we will be discussing about the second measure of skewness that is Bowley's measure of skewness So Bowley developed a measure of skewness which is based on the quartile values. Now, if you can just recall, so the Carl Pearson's measures of skewness is based on the mean, median, mode, and the standard deviation. That is, mean minus mode divided by standard deviation. We get the Carl Pearson's measure of skewness. But here. he has developed a measure of skewness which is based on the quartile values now what are the quartile values you have the q1 q2 q3 so these are the quartile values so the based on these quartile values he has developed a formula for measuring the skewness the absolute measure of skewness he has given the formula as q3 minus q2 minus q2 minus q1 where q3 q2 q1 are the upper quartile median and the lower quartile medians respectively so relative measures of skewness he has given a formula here that is q3 plus q1 minus 2 median divided by q3 minus q1 so the value of the skewness varies between plus and minus 1 so the skewness always it will be in the decimal value only so it will vary between plus 1 and minus 1 so in the case of open ended distribution as well as where extreme values are found in the series this measure is particularly useful so this kind of a measure of skewness so we can calculate easily because we are making use of the quartiles that is q3 plus q1 minus 2m divided by q3 minus q1 now we have an illustration here from the following data find out the coefficient of skewness based on the quartiles now first we will have to note the formula here so what is the formula for relate this measures of skewness here skb equals q3 plus q1 minus 2m divided by q3 minus q1 so let us see what this problem is so they have given us the wages from 100 to 600 and the number of workers is given now we have to find the skewness now what is the formula for skewness bowley skewness equals q3 plus q1 minus 2 median divided by q3 minus q1 so this is a formula for skewness now as per the formula we have to find q1 q3 and 2m now what is m m is nothing but the q2 so let us rewrite the formula in the next slide so here i'll write calculation of quartiles in this first column wages then second column number of workers so in the wages column i have 100 to 200 200 to 300 300 to 400 400 to 500 500 to 600 so up to 600 we have here next 10 14 26 8 2 10 14 26 8 2 
So this is the class interval column and this is the frequency column. Now we have to find the CF. Now how do we find the CF? 10, 10 plus 14, 24 plus 26, 50, 58 and 60. So here it also it is 60. Now we have the CF. Now I have to find Q1, Q2, Q3. Now what is the Q1 here? Q1 class. I have to identify the Q1 class. So I write n by fourth item. So this will be equal to 60 divided by 4. That is the 15th item. Now 15th item I have to see here in the CF. So up to 24 it is here. So this will be the Q1 class. So I write Q1 class is equal to 200 to 300. Next Q1 will be L plus n by 4 minus cf divided by f into i. So what is the lower limit of the class interval? 200. So 200 plus n by 4 is 15 minus, see the cf will always be the previous class interval. 15 minus 10 divided by 14 into 100. So, when I simplify this, it will come up to 500 by 14. So, when we do this, so it will be 200 plus 500 divided by 14 plus 35.71. So, that will be 235.71 is the answer. So, this is Q1. Now, it's the same way I find Q2. Q2 will be L plus N by 2 minus CF divided by F into I. Now, how do I find N by 2? N by 2 will be equal to 60 divided by 2 that is 30. Now, where do we find 30? So, here uh, from 24 to 50, we have the values in this class interval that is 300 to 400. So 300 to 400 this is the Q2 class. So I just substitute the values here. So 300 plus 30 minus 24 by 14 into 100. So this will be 300 plus, now we have Q2 here. So Q2 will be 300 plus 30 minus 24. Now what is the frequency here? 26. So 26 into 100. So when I simplify this, so it will be 600 divided by 26. So it will be 23.07. Or this is equal to 323.07. So this is Q2. Now Q3. Q3 will be 3n by 4. Again we get the Q3 class as 300 by 400. So I just substitute the values 300 plus. Now what is 3n by 4? 45 minus 24 divided by 26 into 100. So this will be 300 plus 45 minus 24 equals 21 into 100 divided by 26. So the Q3 will be 80.76. So 380.76. Now we find the skewness here. S, K, B 
equals q3 plus q1 minus 2m divided by q3 minus q1. Now we have the values here. So SKB will be, what is q3? 380.76 plus 235.71 minus 2 into 323.07 divided by Q3 will be 380.76 minus 235.71. So SKB will be equal to 380.76 plus 235.71. So it will be 616.47 minus. So 2 into 323.07. So 646.14 divided by 380.76 minus 235.71. That will be 145.05. So when I simplify this, I get 616.47 minus 646.14 divided by 145.05. So there is a negative skewness here. So minus 0 0.204. So this is the answer. So in this way we have to calculate. So first thing is find the cumulative frequency. Then find Q1, Q2, Q3. Then you have to substitute the values in, as, in this formula. Then we get the answer as minus 0 0.204. Now we write the conclusion. conclusion. So the data is slightly negatively skewed. So this is the conclusion. For a distribution, Bowley's coefficient of skewness is minus 0 0.56, Q1 is 16.4 and median is 24.2. What is the coefficient of quartile deviation? So we know the formula here. We know the formula that Q3 plus Q1 minus 2m divided by Q3 minus Q1. Now I substitute the values in the formula. Now uh, the SKB is given. This is equal to minus 0 0.56 equals Q3 I don't know. I write as it is. Q1 I know 16.4 minus 2 into 24.2 divided by Q3 minus 16.4. So I have substituted the values here. So I just cross multiply this minus 0 0.56 into Q3 minus 16.4 equals Q3 plus 16.4 minus 48.4. So minus 48.4. Now I just open the bracket here minus 0 0.56 Q3 plus so 16.4 into 0 0.56 9.184 equals q3 minus 48.4 minus 16.4 it will be minus 30 now I bring it to the left hand side of the equation. 
So, or I'll write it as 9.184 plus 32 equals Q3 Q3. So, 32 plus 9.184 will be 41.184 equals 1.56 Q3. Now Q3 will be equal to 41.184 divided by 1.56. So it is 26.4. So the Q3 is 26.4. So, now we have to find coefficient of Qd, Q3 minus Q1 divided by Q3 plus Q1. So, I know Q3, it is 26.4 minus Q1 is 16.4, 26.4 plus 16.4. So, this will be 10, 26.4 plus 16.4, 42.8. So, this will be 10 divided by 42.8, 0 0.2336. So, this is the coefficient of QD. So, 0 0.2336 is the QD. Now we have the functions and applications here. The skewness measures the degree of concentration in the distribution. It facilitates in the study of income distribution and concentration of wealth. So whenever the data is given relating to any of the topics, so we would be able to understand the degree of concentration of distribution. Then the measures of skewness reveals the empirical relationship between the mean, median and mode. So if you just look into the formulas of the skewness, we know that mean minus mode divided by standard deviation, we get the skewness of Carl Pearson skewness. Then if you see the SKB skewness, it will be Q3 plus Q1 minus 2M divided by Q3 minus Q1. So this is Bowley skewness. So, it, it will tell us about the relationship between the mean, median and the mode. The skewness is a useful measure to find out whether the distribution is normal or not. It is helpful as many further statistical measures are applicable only when the distribution is normal. So, only if the distribution is normal, then we can have other statistical techniques on that particular data. But if the distribution is not normal, we cannot have other statistical measures. Then it helps us to know the, how the dispersion on either side of the mode differs in arrangement of the frequencies. So it will also help us to know about the dispersion of the mode also. And it gives an idea of symmetry of distribution of values on both sides of the central value. So whatever is the central value, it will tell us about the distribution of the values on the either side of the central value whether it is the Q1 or the Q3. So we will be able to know how symmetrical the distribution is. So this skewness is very helpful in the measures of dispersion. So with this, we come to the end of this session. Hope you have all followed it. Thank you.